Hola y bienvenidos nuevamente al Seminario Internacional de Sistemas Sociales y Complejidad. El día de hoy contamos con un expositor excepcional, nuestro estimado colega, el doctor Morel Lutzen, que trabaja en el Departamento de Organización de la Escuela de Negocios de Copenhague, en Dinamarca. El profesor Moran realizó sus estudios de licenciatura en la Universidad Freie de Berlín, su maestría en planificación tecnológica y socioeconómica en el Centro Universitario de Roskilde, en Dinamarca, y su doctorado en gestión del conocimiento en la Escuela de Negocios de Copenhague en el Departamento de Gestión, Política y Filosofía. Sus investigaciones se centran en el saber y el desconocimiento en los procesos de organización y gestión. Sus principales áreas empíricas de trabajo son las organizaciones públicas en Escandinavia, especialmente la atención médica, la gestión y el desarrollo de liderazgo y recientemente las organizaciones agrícolas. Sus áreas primarias de investigación son teoría organizacional y sociológica, gestión del sector público, reformas organizacionales y toma de decisiones, gestión y desarrollo de liderazgo, performatividad crítica y agnotología, gestión del conocimiento y gestión del desconocimiento y la ignorancia. Hoy la exposición que nos presenta el profesor Morten Dulce tiene como título Formas de no saber, Luman, organizaciones e ignorancia. Igualmente nos proporcionará unas percepciones sobre un nuevo número especial de la revista efímera sobre ignorancia organizada. Me parece importante señalar que Moren habla múltiples idiomas y amablemente nos ha hecho una presentación en español para que podamos seguir su conferencia. Muy agradecido por su generosidad personal e intelectual para estar hoy en el seminario. Le cedo la palabra a nuestro apreciado profesor Moren Hudson. Moren. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, thank you very much for the very kind uh, uh, invitation. I'm really honored to also to address uh, address this audience, and I know there are very many uh, really very uh, civil uh, distinguished uh, scholars and experts in system theory and human working in South America. So this is a very uh, a great honor for me to make this uh, presentation. And also thank you very much, uh, Carlos, for for your very kind uh, presentation. Um, And I'll, maybe I can just add that uh, that uh, uh, I've been working not not alone with the Luhmann. We have been at Copenhagen Business School. We uh, we are a network with people working with system theory and Luhmann. We have been doing that for more than 20 years. And uh, I guess that that what sort of distinguishes us is that we have been trying to make uh, system theory also empirically uh, fruitful. So we have been working with. Uh, With Luhmann as an analytical inspiration, but we have also been doing empirical uh, work. And we have also been educating more than uh, 900 uh, students, uh, not uh, only in Luhmann, but we have had a master program where Luhmann has been one of the major uh, theoretical inspirations. And uh, today, my, my current uh, research in interests uh, has to do, as, uh, as Carlos also mentioned in the introduction, with the ignorance. And I'm um, uh, sort of maybe the overall problem that I'm interested in is the self-harm of uh, social systems. Why do social systems sort of uh, harm themselves? And I think that, that ignorance is an important ingredient in, in this. And I've been, I'm working with, uh, with some of the cases I'm working with currently is from agriculture and uh, also uh, banking. So the, um, the, disp the disposition of uh, the talk today, I have the uh, three parts and it's not uh, uh, very closely linked, but first I will uh, have some reflections on uh, ignorance in a sort of in a, in a societal perspective and uh, uh, focusing also on the relation between uh, ignorance and uh, some of the major uh, societal crises that we face today and then i will uh, zoom in in the second part on organizations and ignorance and uh, in the end i will make a, a few remarks related to organized ignorance uh, uh, and some points we have made out of a special issue of a journal of the journal uh, ephemera on organized ignorance. 
So and uh, so if if you lose concentration in the way, you can just wait and then we'll uh, and a new uh, subject will uh, will come up. So so no reason to panic if you sort of say okay where are we now, I will then you can just come again in 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 the next uh, subject. So if we start with uh, uh, crisis and uh, ignorance. I think it's it's uh, it's um, you can uh, observe, and that is uh, very often done. Uh, you can observe ignorance as a kind of a condition. And uh, uh, for instance, related to COVID nineteen, uh, there were endless discussions uh, of what we know and what we don't know. How will it develop? Where does it come from? Uh, how many? Uh, what, what should? What 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 is the, the proper strategy against against it, etc. So a lot of things that that were simply uh, objectively in a way unknown that we couldn't know because we didn't have the experiences. And uh, today, similarly, we know that more pandemics will come, but where and when and how and with what consequences, we don't know uh, because it's going to happen in the future and we cannot uh, see that. Similarly, uh, we have the climate crisis, drop of diversity, biodiversity, et cetera. We, we know it's going on, but we don't know exactly uh, what the consequences will be and how it will develop. Uh, Ulrich Beck and uh, Peter Wehling have uh, claimed that numerous spheres of action and politics in contemporary, contemporary societies are conditioned by non-knowing rather than by knowledge, as uh, uh, exemplified with COVID-19. So it is, of course, very important how societies deal with their non-knowledge uh, or what they don't, they know that they don't know. And this is, of course, uh, uh, politicized. And uh, whether you react like Trump or uh, in different ways, it's clearly, it's very political how you deal with what you don't know. So that, that's one take on ignorance. But a different take on ignorance, I guess, is uh, to observe it with a system theory. Here, system, here, ignorance is not necessarily observed as a condition, but as relative to specific uh, systems. Uh, it, it, in, in system theory, knowledge is uh, seen as cognitively uh, stabilized structures, not as facts and uh, trivial uh, facts, uh, but it's, it's a kind of a selective structures uh, uh, structuring what you observe and what you don't observe. For instance, a police officer, a doctor, and a journalist will have very different knowledge, meaning that they will observe, for instance, a traffic accident in very different ways. So knowledge in system theory is a question of, of uh, uh, selections and also how, how systems connect to these selections. It's a kind of a schemata for observation, you could say. And non-knowledge in this perspective is then um, the non-selected uh, selected differences, the, uh, the, the, the things that are not selected. So uh, uh, Luhmann, for instance, uh, in this uh, regard, st states that obviously no orthopedic system can adapt to its en environment. It only operates as if it were adopted. And the reason that uh, social systems cannot adapt to their environment is that they don't know it. Uh, they only know their own environment. Uh, so, so, and, and uh, their self-produced environment, which is also in, in the German term, which also used in English, the, the Umwelt. And the Umwelt is always uh, um, the perceived environment. And, and uh, here, what, what is not observed is, of course, the surroundings, all the stuff that is not observed. And this, on, this, uh, on the basis of these theoretical uh, uh, assumptions or uh, theoretical ideas, uh, Luhmann, uh, you can, Luhmann's in a way, not directly, but at least it's, it's, if he interprets it in, 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 raised in relation to non-knowledge to, to non and ignorance, um, is then we can see how ignorance is a, a very a core uh, element in the crisis uh, today, also relating and inspired by ecological, the book on ecological communication by Luhmann, we can see how modern society is differentiated in different, uh, in different function systems with different codes uh, and uh, programs. And these codes and programs limit the observations and thus also the knowledge of the systems. 
Luhmann states that the very success of the function systems depends upon ne neglect. What does that mean? It means that the reason uh, specific social uh, function systems are successful is that they can uh, disregard a lot of things. Uh, science, for instance, doesn't uh, have to take into, to into consideration whether what they are working with and, and, and uh, trying to, to understand is uh, religiously okay. Or and, and politics doesn't have to think about uh, science and economics doesn't have to think about uh, religion, etc. So, so to, to disregard things makes it more easy to speak and faster to to communicate and and this is uh, so, so the, the success has to do with the with the, the uh, what what's also called legitimate indifference it's okay not to care so you can really space in it's kind of a specialization advantage you could say so this makes uh, Luhmann state also that the calamity is no longer exploitation and suppression but neglect neglect the neglect means uh, ignorance of how the function systems influence each other, humans, and nature. Uh, the economical system can uh, neglect, can ignore how it uh, how it influences the climate or biodiversity or the oceans with the plastic, etc. It's simply not. It's legitimate not to take that into consideration. So we can uh, continue the, the quote above and, and uh, where Luhmann continues and says, oh, obviously no orthopedic system can adapt to its environment. It only operates as if it were adapted. This is the reason why modern society slides into more and more problems with its individuals and its ecological conditions. So the point is that social systems act uh, in a way where it's legitimate not to uh, know a lot of things that actually is uh, important. So we have today, in according to system theory, uh, a, a quite a paradoxical paradoxical relation between knowledge and ignorance, because society knows com and communicates about many crises today. We know about plastic pollution in the oceans. Uh, falling uh, loss of the biodiversity etc but still even though society communicates about these uh, it acts as if it didn't know it's uh, uh, still continues with uh, with polluting with uh, burning uh, 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 fossil fuels etc so there's this mismatch between what society knows and what how it acts it because it acts as if it didn't know and this is uh, according to, to Luhmann, uh, re closely related to functional differentiation, where it's okay to to uh, to act as if you didn't know in in the in the different systems. So we have a, uh, uh, what Sloterdijk and Sisek have had called as enlightened false consciousness, playing on the, on Marx, of course, who talks about uh, the the false consciousness that they know uh, they uh, they don't know what they're doing, but they're still doing it. And here, according to Sloterdijk and Sisek, society actually knows what it's doing, but it's still doing it. So with this, in this complex relationship between knowledge and ignorance uh, can also be related to, to science in, uh, and, and uh, scientific knowledge about climate crisis, loss of diverse, biodiversity, etc., cetera, is uh, it's legitimate to ignore this by other function systems. And uh, often uh, we hope or think that scientific uh, knowledge is uh, binding, but of course it's only binding within the scientific uh, system itself. It's not binding for others. So this has to do with uh, the, the distinction between function and performance in system theory and the performance of a system, what it's uh, sort of... Um, what it offers to other uh, systems, this performance is not decided by the system giving the performance, but by uh, by the receivers of the performance. So uh, the performance of the scientific system is decided by the other function systems, meaning that we, we think maybe that knowledge about climate changes is binding, but for other systems, it can be observed as uh, something you can use for political reasons 
or as uh, something you can use for for a business new business ideas. I, for instance, in China, I've seen uh, advertisements for uh, uh, fresh air uh, holidays. So, uh, so uh, this is a way to observe pollution in a certain way. So, it's as, as an opportunity uh, for business. So, what we have today is seems to be a world society uh, ignoring its uh, own knowledge about its uh, suicidal direction. Yeah, of course, this can be uh, discussed uh, more. And it was, it is being discussed and it should be discussed more. And we can dive into the different function systems and observe how they can reflect on the way they uh, 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 influence themselves by means of the, the way they influence the environment. And this is uh, related again to Luhmann's concept of rationality, but that's, a, that's another, another story. So yeah, that was the first part of my talk. And I shall now just check the time uh, and uh, turn into organizations. And uh, of course, organizations uh, and, uh, and ignorance is an intense field, you could say. And uh, a lot of things are not known and for, for, for uh, sort of uh, for, for, for good reasons in, in, uh, in organizations. For instance, uh, often it's uh, not known what the other people get in salary. Um, and uh, and uh, often it's also not known. The actual performance of work is not known. At least I take care not to, to let my managers know what I actually do. And uh, many employees uh, are not interested in that. The kind of breaks, illness, how long do we have a break? Um, uh, are we really ill when we say we're ill, et cetera? Um, and again, also from the side of management, management information systems, uh, they do not uh, uh, inform about everything, of course, and especially they do not inform about uh, managers. So how do uh, we have very little knowledge about what managers actually do because that's not the purpose of management information systems, even though you could think that that, that could be a purpose. So knowledge and ignorance uh, is, uh, of course, in, in this setting, in an organizational setting, closely uh, connected with interest and, and power. And we have a play between managers and employees, between uh, managers and executive boards, between uh, organizations and stakeholders, etc., playing with, the, with the, 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 the kind of knowledge and, uh, and uh, ignorance. And this, of course, changes with new conditions. We get new IT uh, surveillance possibilities, but we also uh, today have uh, employees working more from home, so they can what what uh, what are they actually doing, etc. A lot a lot of uh, things can be uh, be discussed here, and in this sense, it's and is being discussed, and and a lot of of uh, strategies going on here. <clears throat> we have, uh, uh, of course, uh, this is also mirrored in in organization studies which has been uh, been working with different elements of, of ignorance. In, in, uh, especially it has been, uh, ignorance has been seen as a problem and knowledge, man knowledge management has been seen as a kind of solution, uh, how to optimize the way, <coughs> sorry, the way knowledge is distributed in, in organizations. Ignorance has also been, been uh, uh, reflected as bounded rationality when it comes to decision making, especially by uh, Herbert Simon and James March, of course. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and in this sense, they have sort of accepted that, that ignorance is a, is a, is a condition that, that has to be uh, taken into consideration in the way we make uh, decisions. So, and, and more recently, maybe ignorance has also been studied as a solution, uh, or at least as a, as a political uh, solution to, to certain uh, questions. And then we have the development of agnotology, uh, the, the word developed by uh, uh, Proctor in the US, uh, and, and also the notion of strategic ignorance, ign uh, strategic ignorance with uh, uh, Lindsay McGoy as one of the, one of the, the leading scholars and, and these studies or these approaches focus on the dark side of, of knowledge management, you could say, uh, the focus on agnotology as a study of production and maintenance of, uh, of ignorance. In this here, uh, ignorance is not seen as a condition, but as a result of power games between actors who have an interest in hiding information. 
And some of the, the, the most famous cases is from the tobacco industry, <clears throat> dealing with the, the uh, how the tobacco industry has, has trying to, to hide the knowledge about the relation between smoking and cancer, for instance. And but also big pharma uh, have uh, it has been endless how, how big uh, pharma uh, have have uh, 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 McGoy has done that study how big pharma uh, hide the relation between uh, increased risk of suicide and and um, different kind of, of uh, antidepressant uh, medicine. Also, the oil industry is of course famous for hiding uh, early knowledge about uh, the relation between. Uh, uh, different kind of, of uh, fossil fuel and, and climate change. So, so the, the industries, of course, have uh, unfolded st uh, strategic ignorance by different kind of, of hiding uh, knowledge. And, and uh, this, in this uh, area, uh, uh, it has been studied at different kind of, of strategies, especially has been, uh, has, have been studied uh, McGoy talks about oracular power as the, the power to control the line between knowledge and ignorance. <clears throat> and one way to do that is to make uh, secrecies, to hide and suppress uh, knowledge, in, either by suppressing existing knowledge or by suppressing something that could be uh, produced, knowledge in, in, in speech, so to speak. But uh, a different strategy is uh, doubt, uh, very good books about uh, the relation between uh, how, how uh, strategic, strategic ignorance is produced by producing uh, doubts. Uh, different, uh, say, okay, there's this idea about climate change, but others would also say, and the media have uh, been, been active in, in playing this because they like uh, conflicts. So as soon as you have a discussion, you can have two sides. So, uh, so in this sense, already we have the doubt. Decoupling. This is a, is a third strategy. Having uh, taking care that take try to take care that different departments of the of an organization, for instance, don't uh, have the same kind of knowledge. Or piling up uh, data is also a way to produce uh, ignorance simply <clears throat> by creating uh, complexity. So so. Uh, um, uh, strate uh, strategic ignorance can be about hiding uh, or uh, taking care that others don't know, but there's also something about self-made uh, ignorance. Uh, it's sometimes knowledge is it's uh, very inconvenient to know something. So sometimes actors don't want knowledge because it can um, they want to to avoid liability, uh, especially uh, politicians and managers. Uh, are very sometimes very keen that they don't want know to to uh, they don't want to to know something because it will make them responsible if it it um, it becomes a scandal, and uh, but maybe sometimes it's, it's also people don't want to knowledge because they don't know how to react to it. A company has a deficit; it's a, it's a bad, a bad work environment, low quality, and if they have knowledge about these. Uh, three different things, it may be very difficult to react. It's much uh, easier to not to produce knowledge about the, the work, the bad working environment, because then you can ignore it. Also, sometimes knowledge may problematize actions and interests. So, so you try not to, to know that the, 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 the IT development is not really very uh, effective, but if you get this knowledge, you don't know how to, 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 um, to, to handle it. And maybe if you have an interest in, in going on with developing the IT stuff, then you don't want this knowledge. <clears throat> and of course, or sometimes there are also some more positive aspects of ignorance. It can, if you, it can help avoid discrimination if you are going to grade some uh, um, assignments. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it can be a good thing not to know the age and the sex and the, the race, etc., of the students, uh, so it will make a more fair, um, fair judgment. So, of course, uh, ignorance can also have positive um, aspects. Also, maybe you don't want to know uh, your gen genetical dispositions for a given uh, a certain diseases. Again, here, uh, strategies have been uh, investigated, stories about denial, decoupling, uh, how to act of ignoring, unseeing, etc. <coughs> so, 
So, um, yeah, some, some more general uh, uh, comments to the relation between um, the, the relation between ignorance and organizations. And now I shall uh, give two uh, examples of how I've been uh, myself studying aspects of, of uh, organization and ignorance in, uh, in a more systems uh, theoretical uh, way. The first one is uh, about uh, strategic ignorance and um, and we studied uh, uh, some communication about L, uh, livestock uh, MRSA, which is uh, a bacteria that is resistant to a certain kind of antibiotics. And it's a zoonotic disease, meaning that it spreads from, from animals to, uh, to humans and between uh, humans. And this, uh, this disease came in, in, uh, in Denmark in, in 2008, 2010. Uh, there was some uh, discussion about it. And in, uh, in, in, uh, in 2010, <clears throat> a lot of things were not known. And it, for instance, it wasn't known how dangerous it, it actually was. And uh, since then, uh, 10 people have died, and you can discuss uh, whether that's a lot or not. But, but in 2010, it was feared that it could be uh, much worse and, um, and could be sort of a very big problem for the, uh, the treatment of, of uh, antibiotics or, or, or of, of a certain uh, kind of diseases with the bacteria because the antibiotics would uh, work less and less. So, so it was a serious uh, discussion, and um, it was also serious because it could threaten the production of, uh, of pigs. Uh, and in Denmark, uh, the pig production is it's, it's, uh, huge. For each um, human being, we have uh, we produce uh, five pigs every year, primarily for export. So it's a it's a big business. So, so, uh, so what was done in two thousand and ten? Uh, and and the the year the years to follow, we tried to to follow that. And the point was that that very little was actually done. And in the, in two thousand and five, because very little was done, practically all pigs were uh, infected with the disease. So it was given up to do anything about it. So now today, and that's still the situation. Today, all pigs in Denmark have this uh, certain uh, bacteria which still uh, infect some human beings, not as many as a feared, which is a good thing. So, <clears throat> so, so the, the point is what, what we sort of uh, realized quite soon was that uh, how was nothing done? It was not by uh, keeping things a secret. Uh, so, so it was a different strategy uh, to avoid uh, action, uh, which, has to, which had to do with the knowledge and uh, ignorance, but was not about keeping things uh, secret. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, explain, uh, give you an example of how that worked in, in a second, but I just have to, to uh, explain the figure here. Um, probably not, you, you probably don't know much about the organization of, of, the, of the pig production in Denmark, but, but it's, uh, it's produced in a kind of, of, a, of a pyramid in the, in the bottom of, the, of the, uh, the picture here. You have all the ordinary farms producing all the pigs. And then in the top, we have uh, the breeding herds. And in Denmark, uh, even though we produce so many pigs, we only have like 22, 23 breeding herds in the top of the pyramid. And these, uh, uh, the pigs in the, in the top of the breeding pyramid, they represent a huge value. And is the reason why Denmark is competitive on the world market with, with the pigs, because they have a, a very uh, efficient genetic uh, constellation. And it's a result of many years of, uh, of uh, genetic engineering. So, uh, so this represents a big value and the, the pig, the, the entire pig industry depends on these uh, pigs. So when, when the, when the in 2010, when the discussions uh, started, uh, the the um, the administrators, the governmental administrators, asked their advisor, their scientific advisor, what should be done. And this scientific advisor said, "Yes, it's a new disease. There are a lot of things we really don't know." But and here I quote: "Based on prior experience with the resistance, we do, however, estimate." that a potential el elimination 
should, as a minimum, include a stop of new introduction through trade contacts and other sources. A potential elimination plan would thus require establishing a secure test to point out MRSA positive and negative hurts, in part to be able to clear a hurt for MRSA. So here it's important to go back to understand this, because what they say, what he says, is that a potential elim elimination plan would thus require establishing uh, a secure test of the top of the breeding pyramid, because it's a, it's a stop of, of introduction of, of through trade, and the trade in the pyramid goes from the top and down. So this is a, a threat to the entire industry, because what, what the advisor says is test in the top of the pyramid, because that's where the pigs come from uh, in, the, in the down in the pyramid. So what did the, 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 uh, the, the, the governmental um, uh, authority said, the, the, uh, the visionary authority, how did they respond to this? this they uh, forwarded, they said, yes, our advice says this, but uh, in the response to the minister and the parliament, they said, yes, currently it is, however, not possible to est estimate the relative significance of the above factors, nor to what to what extent yet unknown factors may have an influence, etc. Here, what in in the rest of the quote, they uh, they uh, the veterinary authority uh, continues saying what they don't know. So what what's going on is that the uh, the. The, the, the scientific advisor says there are things we don't, we don't know, there are things we know, and they connect to the things we know, and I can actually recommend a strategy based on what we know. The veterinary authority uh, uh, also acknowledges there are things we know, things we don't know, but they connect to what they don't know. And, and this creates very different uh, dynamics in the communication, because uh, if you if you connect to what is known, it becomes possible to act. But if you connect to what you don't know, it's not you, you can just uh, th say things we don't we don't know this. We need to know more. And uh, and this is what we focused on: the selections of knowledge and non-knowledge in the communication. And. Um, If, if you if you uh, selecting the non-knowledge uh, called constantly for more knowledge before acting. And uh, one example is that that um, uh, at a certain point they say the, 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 the authority said, okay, let's test. but uh, okay, does that, uh, that that's knowledge that it, it's uh, based on knowledge it, it, it makes makes sense to test. but, uh, well, yeah, but do we really know what test is the best? Uh, they said, okay, but uh, so connecting to non-knowledge, they said, we don't know which test is the best. And they didn't know how to test the test. So this, re again, it displaces communication constantly to, to things we don't know. <clears throat> so overall, uh, the, the, the case demonstrates how ignorance can be maintained and produced not by means of hiding things, but by means of selecting non-knowledge. And as we know, in system theory, communication involves constantly selections. And selecting the non-knowledge just can continue the non-knowledge uh, in, 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 uh, endlessly, um, in an endless way. And uh, this seems to be, when we realize this, it seems to be that something that we detected all over the place in different cases, how uh, politicians especially uh, uh, often refer to what we don't know in order to avoid actions. So, so non-knowledge seems to, to support uh, non-action. And this has also been the case with the, with the climate changes, for instance. Okay, there are so many things we don't know, so we need more knowledge before we can act. And this is always correct in a way because we, we there's also always something we don't know, but uh, but it's a way to it's a very conservative way because if you uh, if you don't want to act you can just uh, refer to things we don't know and that is uh, done very often. Yes, so 
that was the first case. Uh, the second case uh, has to do with um, with uh, self uh, self produced self inflicted ignorance, and ignorance is not uh, uh, only uh, strategic and intentional. Sometimes it's uh, it just emerges in a way, and it's not the result of purposeful acts. We have uh, uh, the, the expression of pu se uh, public secrets. We have uh, ignorance that is distributed and collective, something we share and do together without really uh, being very intentional about it. And I think this, uh, this case demonstrates how that, uh, how that can be done. It's about the construction of a Danish uh, quality model within the healthcare and uh, the model uh, was it, it consists of standards and indicators measuring practice in the entire Danish healthcare system. And uh, this is uh, uh, well known in, in accreditation models, both from healthcare, but also from uh, educational institutions, etc. Also in US and other places. So this this model was uh, should be uh, established and designed. And uh, part of it was that it should be it should also uh, produce knowledge about uh, medical practices. So uh, what I did was that I started uh, the the analysis and the discussions involved in the development of the model, not how it worked, but how it was designed and developed. And uh, it was guided by an initial puzzle, name, namely that the most obvious subjects. Uh, in this model was got very little attention. It wasn't really discussed. So in, in the sense, it was a difficult study that I wanted to do because uh, I wanted to, to study something that didn't happen. And um, I think we can uh, skip this one uh, and go directly to this because that illustrates uh, the, 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 the assumptions or the theoretical, theoretical basis of, of the study because uh, I, I, re I found it very fruitful to use Luhmann's concept of meaning in this study. And here we have meaning is the distinction between the actualized and the potential. And we can, I, 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 we can ob observe communication as something that is uh, constantly actualized in the messages, in the communication. But what is actualized always happens in the horizon of, a, of, of uh, other potentials. So something could have been said, uh, a lot of things can be said, and something is selected and then said. And not everything that is possible is said. That is not uh, possible. Only certain things are uh, selected and actualized as information, as uh, communication. So that's a basic, a basic uh, uh, theoretical uh, premise for, for, for this study. And then I thought, okay, maybe we can understand that uh, that. Certain, uh, certain things are not just talked about because they, they are uh, destructive potentialities. And destructive potentialities is something we could talk about, but that if we did it, it would be, it would sort of uh, uh, obstruct the, the current direction of the communication, or it would just uh, sort of uh, uh, give problems in, in, in the, in the, in the, for the communication. Maybe a, a, a sort of a, a obvious example could be that we have a dinner table and and at this dinner table, everybody probably knows that one is uh, is about one of the, the participants is about to be divorced. But we know that if we sort of actualize this, which it could be actualized because everybody knows it. And well, it's irrelevant to, to discuss and maybe have sort of a, a common uh, therapeutic talk, but we also know that it will destroy the potential party. So we have, so if we, if we actualize the talk about the, uh, the divorce, it will uh, destroy the, the, good, the good mood. So, uh, so it could be a destructive potentiality. Um, and then uh, I, I thought maybe there are certain uh, ways that destructive potentialities are avoided. And I turned these uh, uh, forms of inattentiveness. To be more uh, concrete, what uh, what uh, was never discussed in the model of this of healthcare was what it would cost to drive the model. I think that was a very obvious thing because uh, healthcare in Denmark and other places 
are uh, is very uh, obsessed with costs because it's a very uh, costly and and um, uh, uh, scientific area. So so of course it, it, it's a, it's a, uh, obsessed with cost, but it was never discussed what this model would cost to develop and to uh, to run. Also the effects were not discussed. What would actually be the outcome of this new uh, quality model? Uh, that was not discussed. Uh, it was not discussed whether what could have been the, the, the goals of the model, could there be alternative strategies to get to, to reach these goals? That was also not uh, discussed. So uh, yeah, and, and other things were, were uh, that was very obvious to discuss and the, the questions I got when I read the, 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 the ideas about the, the model, they were simply absent. So, so I, I, I thought maybe we can see this as destructive potentialities because it was obvious that, that it would be very costly to run the model. And was that really a good idea? Or could we get more healthcare for the money in, in, in different ways? Also, uh, were there other uh, alternative strategies that were also very uh, obvious? Maybe a better education for, uh, uh, would be, would be, we would have more quality of healthcare by uh, improving education rather than have these kind of control uh, models. So, but that was, that was never discussed. And if it had been discussed, it would have problematized the model itself, uh, which would have been uh, for, for the people doing it, of course, uh, annoying. So how was that done? Uh, I think uh, uh, you have to, 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 uh, to, to, in different cases, we can see different kinds of Form, forms of inattentiveness. I think in some of the, the, the forms of inattentiveness, the ways the destructive potentialities uh, were avoided was by uh, substitution uh, science uh, of imagined knowledge for knowledge. So instead of actually having knowledge about the outcome, they would they just have references to journals discussing quality. So the references within say, okay, this is based on, on evidence. But but when we when one followed the, 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 the references, it was not to proper evidence, but just to some general discussions, for instance. So so uh, but it looked uh, sort of as if it were based on, on uh, knowledge. Also, uh, one way to, to avoid uh, the destructive potentialities was, was by excluding experience people. Uh, uh, really, real uh, medical specialists were not included. People working with, uh, like myself, um, organizations and uh, other other uh, much more uh, expertise in when it comes to to um, to quality and to st standardization, etc. That kind of of, of uh, scientific knowledge was also excluded. And uh, uh, often they, they use deadlines saying, okay, we have to do this really fast. So the, the different, uh, more fundamental discussions, uh, there simply weren't time, weren't time for them. And one of the more uh, entertaining uh, forms of inattentiveness was uh, distractions in the, in the form, forms of uh, beautiful uh, pictures of animals, which I never uh, understood what was uh, on the website, etc. But it was simply a distraction. It didn't make any sense. So, uh, so, so uh, in a way, it, it, uh, it was very important to develop the model to avoid discussions, to avoid uh, the production of, of knowledge, because that would have problematized the entire, uh, the entire model. So what happened was that the model uh, ran, it was established, uh, it, in this sense, the forms of inattentiveness uh, were successful. But the, the model uh, was very unpopular it, because it consumed a lot of time. It's, it was in many fields, it was irrelevant. It was superficial to the actual complexity of, of medical uh, processes. And then in 2015, uh, the resistance to the model was uh, so, uh, so broad that they had to, to, to drop it. And uh, for me, there's no doubt that this was, of course, related to the fact that, that the model, uh, when it was designed, was uh, excluded so much uh, that could have been uh, relevant uh, knowledge. So a kind of, of analytical uh, takeaway uh, is that, that forms of inattentiveness 
uh, are way, ways to avoid attention and thus the production of uh, knowledge. And in, in this sense, uh, uh, also when I've discussed it with people from healthcare, they have been sort of uh, saying, okay, but is this, this really a kind of intentional strategy? Did they do this on purpose, et cetera? And for, for me, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to say, but maybe it's uh, the question of intentions uh, is not that important, uh, uh, especially not when you work with a system theory, because uh, when with system th theory, you can always uh, sort of ascribe intentions to uh, certain actors, but uh, intentions are not necessarily the driver. It's more uh, communication, it's more something that emerges uh, out of its own logics and not necessarily based on, on individual uh, intentions. So, yeah, I will finish. I can see the time is running. Uh, I'll finish with just a few, uh, like maybe five uh, minutes, uh, uh, learnings from uh, editing a special issue on organized ignorance, uh, an issue we have uh, recently uh, published. Uh, I've edited this together with Tor Bakken and Justine Grønbæk Pors. Um, in the, in the the journal ephemera, which is uh, open access, so so you uh, you can um, it's 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 easy to to find, and uh, here we we state that the agnotology has focused on on strategic and intentional ignorance, but related to what I said about forms of inattentiveness, it seems that that uh, a lot of of ignorance is uh, not necessarily intentional, but is still uh, going on. Um, and and just the learnings from from these uh, one learning is that ignorance is not necessarily something that is only cognitive it's more something that that people do uh, people behave uh, as if they didn't know and that is what what uh, what matters knowledge may be available but doesn't really make a difference so it's a lot of acts of of ignoring and uh, and that's um, that, that's going on also in organizations and here uh, ignorance is all uh, also a collective we have the kind of of uh, when in in learning theories we have the expressions of communities of practice but here we have a kind of communities of ignorance looking at organizations uh, often they are together uh, in, for different reasons they together produce and they pretend they don't really know what's going on. So uh, Plesner and Justusen have coined in one of the articles in the special issue, have coined the expression pluralistic collective ignorance, uh, sort of capturing, conceptualizing the, 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 the point that different actors have uh, different reasons, but still they, they uh, collab collaborate by not really uh, producing any knowledge and ignoring or denying uh, different problems they have. Ignorance is also relational. It's, an, it's not only an objective occurrence, but it's, a, it's a relational in the sense that, uh, that it's, it, it differs on, between different people. Uh, Hoylund and Simonsen in one of their articles have uh, talked about patients and nurses uh, who observe uh, each other from different spheres and, and uh, don't really know what's going on uh, for, for each other. And um, also we realized that, that, that at least one, one attempt is that ignorance is not only uh, human, it's, it's, it's also non-human. Uh, it's uh, supported by different kinds of arrangements, organizational arrangements, IT systems, architecture, procedures, uh, I mentioned management systems before. Management systems, of course, also produce certain kinds of uh, of uh, of ignorance, as does materiality. Glass walls, uh, for instance, support, mediates, and in, in, uh, enables certain elements of uh, of ignorance. Ignorance is also uh, something that that may that may be enabling. Uh, and and it can be uh, um, uh, only if you if if you sort of 
continue uh, being ignorant, it's it's uh, it's possible, for instance, to uh, keep on developing IT systems that don't really work. So you have to ignore that they don't work in order to be able to uh, actually to produce uh, to to still produce the systems. And the uh, uh, last point is that ignorance is also productive. It does something. Uh, one of the articles, for instance, study how the fact that nobody really knows the uh, the purpose of a certain uh, again an, an IT uh, system uh, means that they fill this uh, this uh, lack this hole of knowledge. They fill that with fantasies of uh, of what could be. Uh, certain uh, could be the purpose, and uh, they, it produces a lot of fantasies. So, next step: uh, what what's the next uh, things to study? I think it's it's definitely still uh, very relevant to study strategic ignorance because it matters, and big players uh, have to be it has to be revealed how they do it. But I think there are also potentials in, in going beyond strategic ignorance, focus on the way ignorance is political, and uh, because uh, ignorance constitutes what uh, cannot, what can be talked about, what cannot be talked about, seen or unseen, and uh, and to, to 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 discuss that, it makes sense to take new perspectives in, discuss uh, materiality, effect, culture, structure, decisions making, etc. So that was. Um, uh, that was it, and uh, gracias por su atención. Bueno, antes que nada, el profesor Moren está en la disposición de responder por escrito, por supuesto, todas las preguntas hechas en comentarios posteriormente. Eh, con estas extraordinarias observaciones, el Seminario Internacional de Sistemas Sociales, Redes y Complejidad Agradece al estimado profesor Moren Nusson su brillante y extraordinaria conferencia, Formas de no saber, organizaciones e ignorancia, de tanta aplicación y con tantas similitudes en este tema, nuestra América en ámbitos ecológicos, financieros, políticos, legales, religiosos, educativos, deportivos, etc. Muchísimas gracias, estimado Moren.